All right, we'll give it a minute for some other participants to come in and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon or this evening. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Jesse Sanders, and this month's Fish Health Lecture Series will look at carp pox in koi. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to put them in the chat so I can read them later. So today we'll be looking at what exactly carp pox is, how does carp pox affect koi, and how can you prevent your fish from becoming infected? So starting with what is carp pox? Carp pox's formal name is cyprinid herpes virus one. So this may sound very familiar because it's a cousin of the koi herpes virus. So that's cyprinid, her cyprinid herpes virus three. This is the very deadly uh, virus in koi that can end up killing a lot of your fish. So it's similar, but they have absolutely different, um, different clinical signs. So learning a little bit more about herpes viruses in general. They are double-stranded DNA viruses enclosed in an icosopentahedral capsid. And this is pretty much true for all herpes viruses, no matter what species you're dealing with. So herpes viruses replicates in epithelial cells. However, it also travels along the sensory nerves to the dorsal root ganglia. So this is within the neural tissue specifically is where this virus is essentially stored and establishes latency for life. So if you have a herpes virus, if you know an other animal has a herpes virus, it's in them forever. Obviously, you can't go through all your neural tissue and carve out the parts that are herpes. So no matter what species you are, if you have a confirmed herpes virus, it's in you for life. And that's just the way herpes viruses go. So fortunately, when we're looking at carp pox, since most of these koi are going to be in a fairly changing environment, you are going to see temperature dependent effects. So this includes the fish immune system and how fast the skin turnover is obviously temperature regulated. Fish are ectotherms. All of their immune, reproductive, everything is pretty much regulated by the temperature of the pond or the tank. So below about 75 degrees Cel uh, Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, the lesions of carp, parks, carp, carp pox are a lot more apparent. If you warm the water up, the lesions tend to diminish. So what does this mean though for fish that have the virus? Unfortunately, just because the clinical signs resolve does not mean the virus is gone. So again, remember there is latency in neural tissue. So obviously you can't go remove all the nerves from your fish it's gonna be stored in there for life. So this is one of the biggest myths that I think is around with carp pox is just because the lesions go away, again, because the fish's immune system is able to turn over its skin a lot faster, 
that doesn't mean that carp pox isn't still in that fish. It's, it's still in that fish for life. So how does carp pox affect koi? Well, the most common signs that you see are the growth of these superficial kind of plaque or papilloma-like growths. Now this guy here on the right is a more moderate to severe case. So you can see he's kind of got this crusty, crunchy coating on top. Now what's known as the candle wax drippings, which is what's described in most textbooks, doesn't quite fit this description in my opinion. So this is more kind of the crunchy outer coating that you see usually along the dorsal ridge, but it's also on the fins as well. And most commonly, these infections will start along the fins. And it's usually a tiny, tiny little bleb that looks like it's got a little extra piece of thickened skin. Um, sometimes it's on the dorsal fin, like in this fish. Sometimes it's the pectoral fin. Uh, sometimes it's on the pelvic or anal fins. So if you're concerned about a fish, you really got to look them all over to make sure that you know these spots aren't going to end up other, elsewhere. Most cases for these guys are fairly mild. Um, this guy here, again, is more of a moderate case. Um, certainly in very severe infections. So we've had fish cases that are basically the entire dorsal ridge is kind of a crusty, crunchy coating. The biggest part with this is that it may lead to secondary skin infections. So the herpes virus being in that epithelial tissue tends to break down the skin barrier. And the skin in fish is very important at blocking the entrance of different pathogens. So this is bacteria, parasites, unfortunately not viruses, but a lot of these times it makes it a little easier for stuff to get into your fish. And unfortunately in very severe cases, it actually allows more water to get into your fish. So freshwater fish living in an environment that is less dense than their bodies, they're constantly having water kind of diffusing into their body through just, again, passive diffusion. And it's the job of the kidneys and gills to get rid of that extra water. So if there's a problem with the kidney or gills, you can see the fish swell up like a water balloon. Um, this is most commonly what happens when you see that kind of dropsy pine cone. Um, today we had a case where the fish's eyeballs started to pop out of his head. He actually had kidney cancer, but that's different. So overall, the biggest problem with this disease isn't going to be anything that is life-threatening. It's just going to cause them to look a little bit ugly, which if you're not a show fish, it really doesn't matter. Really, the only problem with this disease is that it does increase mortality in young fish. So if you have a pond that you're bringing new fish in or you're having a spawning event like we're having many of right here in California right now, there is a chance that this virus could kill the young fish. However, it's still very rare. Another big problem with carp pox is it has a very similar presentation to hikui. So if you're not familiar with hikui, hikui is a cutaneous perivascular wall tumor, commonly called a skin cancer because nobody wants to say that long lesion every time. And the biggest difference between this and carp pox is that hikui is treatable. It's again, being that skin cancer within the epithelial cells, we can actually apply cryotherapy to freeze the affected tissue. However, with carp pox being a herpes virus, again, it's in the neural tissue, which I, no one can burn that out of a fish. So I'm gonna present two cases to you right now. One of these has carp pox, one of them has hikui. Now these cases look insanely similar. So it's really hard to tell if your fish might have carp pox versus if they have hikui. Again, remember, hikui is treatable, carp pox is not. So unfortunately, these do require veterinary diagnosis to confirm. Um, in this case, if you've been paying attention, uh, the fish on the right is, was in our first slide. He does have carp pox. The fish on the left has hikui and is currently undergoing treatment right now. So very, very similar case presentations. Again, one is treatable, the guy on the left, the other is not, but will look better in warmer water. So how do you protect your koi from getting carp pox? Well, unfortunately, you kind of can't. Um, 
again, latent carriers can show no clinical signs and still spread the virus. This is where cart pox kind of plays into its cousin KHV. So coi herpes virus, cyprinid herpes virus three. You can have carriers that, again, carrying the virus, not showing any clinical signs. And it's just the luck of the dice with that fish's genetics. So you might have a fish like pictured on the right. So you can see the carp pox lesion. Well, you can try to find it. We're gonna circle it in a minute, but it could be something that is very inapparent in your pond. And unfortunately it spreads exactly the same as KHV. So fish to fish contact, it can spread in the water. Fortunately or unfortunately for most fish, about 75% of our clients here in California have at least one fish with a known infection. So I have a feeling it is fairly widespread. And unfortunately, once you've confirmed a case in your pond, it's very likely all the fish have it. But again, like herpes and many other species, it's very rare that you know all of them are gonna show clinical signs at once. Sure, you might have one that's weaker than the pack. And again, it comes down to genetics and how that fish was bred. Some fish are just weaker than others and will show clinical signs more quickly if it's a parasite, if it's a bacteria, if it's a virus. So I wouldn't really worry about it too much. And again, with this little guy, you can barely see that little lesion there on his back. It fits in perfectly with that little white patch that he had. So again, unless you have very young fish, it's not gonna do really much except cause some aesthetic issues. And if your fish isn't going to a competition, then I really wouldn't worry about it. So another big myth with carp pox is that you can cut off the lesions and the fish will be cured. Well, unfortunately doing that, you're actually disrupting the protective skin barrier and the lesion can grow back even worse because all that good mucus that's covering the tissue, you have basically just cut that all off and allowed anything swimming around in your pond, be it parasites, bacteria, is all going to invade that spot. Fish, tank, pond, they live in a toilet. There is bacteria and parasites around them all the time. So unfortunately, by cutting off those lesions, again, you're not able to cut off all the neural tissue. And the dorsal root ganglion is pretty much right at the, the spinal cord. So you might have made them look temporarily better, but I guarantee it's probably going to come back worse. Really, the best method to resolve the lesions, again, not treat the fish, is to increase the water temperature, which is relatively expensive, depending on how big your system is. And unfortunately, the warmer it is, the faster you will lose water because it will evaporate faster. So. Keep in mind that most mild infections have no impact on your fish's overall health. Again, it's mostly just an aesthetic issue. It'll come and go. Some very severe infections may require, you know, secondary treatment for, mostly we see ulcerations, but again, that's on a case by case basis. If you are concerned, there is confirmatory testing available. So there's many labs that can take a small skin sample and do histopathology. And this is great if you have a case of carp pox versus hukui versus maybe an ulcer or some other random skin growth. There's, there's many different things in fish that we can look at for histopath. So we're gonna finish up with a quick question is, can goldfish carry cyprinid herpes virus one? And unfortunately, I can't give you a straight answer for that. It is unknown at this time. They just, unfortunately, there's, there's too many other things going on in the fish world that we just don't know. However, goldfish can carry cyprinid herpes virus three. So I would be under the assumption that they can probably carry cyprinid herpes virus one as well. Again, can't be confirmed, but we can confer the cyprinid herpes virus three. And this is very similar to it. So there is a risk. And yes, koi and goldfish can live together. They're all carp. They share the same diseases and viruses. Some might show clinical signs. Yes, this might be a good reason not to mix your fish, but you could also add a koi that's carrying this and not know it at all. So with that, I am happy to take any questions that everybody has. Again, please put them in the chat so I can read them and everyone can share them. Um, this is a little shorter than most of our other sessions. I wanna keep this quick and to the point. So with that, does anybody have any questions?
If you think of a question later, you all received a confirmation email when you registered for this webinar. So you're welcome to send me an email later if you have any questions that pop up. I'll give you guys one more minute. All right, well, thank you so much, all of you who attended live. Um, oh, here's a good question. Um, does the lesion ever totally disappear for a while? So it can temporarily. Um, again, it depends on the environment. It depends on your fish's overall health. So if your fish is weakened from, say, poor water quality, there's a secondary infection, if you take care of the primary causes, it can cause the lesions to resolve temporarily. So that's a very excellent question. Uh, yes, the lesions can disappear for a while. That, that can certainly happen with some cases. So another question, would you generally recommend testing the owners and then raising temperatures? So yes, if you have a fish that you are confirmed about or concerned about, it is always a good idea to have a veterinarian come out and give you a confirmation. Again, if it's a cooey, we can treat it, which would be great and resolve that entirely. And then once you have, you know, the confirmation of carp pox, again, it, it's up to you if you want to try to raise the temperature or not. It's not going to make the lesions, you know, disappear from your fish forever, but it will resolve temporary issues and can certainly bring relief to some more moderate to severe infections, especially if they have secondary bacteria and other fun things growing on them. But yes, excellent question. All right, well, thank you again, everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next month with our July talk on goldfish buoyancy disorders. So thank you again for attending. And if you have any more questions, feel free to um, return the email that was with your confirmation. Thank you and have a good night.